Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So this is basically uh, this chapter that we are going to read today is another uh, chapter that will help you to find out certain things which are not real. They may not happen, but uh, sometimes, you know, you may ha also have encountered that you have an illusion. You uh, tend to see things, you tend to hear things. So sometimes they appear to be true and sometimes it's just an illusion. So here also, there's a story about one person who has witnessed something which is beyond the reality. So now when he's trying to figure out if this is true or not, in the complete uh, story, you'll find out that this person tries to find out or figure out if what he saw or witnessed was true or not. And by the end of the story, you'll get to know about it. So let's start. Uh, the presidents of the New York Central and the New York, New Heaven and Hartford rail, uh, Railroads will swear on a stack of timetables that there are only two. But I say there are three. Now, first of all, you need to understand who is saying that. So it's the narrator, that's the same person I'm talking about, the person who has witnessed something. He says that everybody, every dignitary of New York is saying that there are only two, but I say three. Now, what are these numbers? They're talking about levels of stations. Okay, so there is one uh, station, the name of the uh, station is Grand Central Station. It is Grand Central Station. So now what the narrator is saying that the presidents of New York say that there are two levels of the station, but I say that there are three. Now, why is he saying and what he, what he has witnessed? As I was telling you, he has witnessed the third level of the Grand Central Station. And now he is telling this to his friends and colleagues that people may say that there are only two. And when I talk about level, it means uh, platforms you can see on a level. For example, if you are uh, on the ground, this is first level. If you go by stair or elevator, this is, it is the second level. And the third level can also be underground, like here. It can also be above three. So these are the levels that he is talking about that up till now people have seen only two levels. But as for me, I have also seen the third level of the station. Yes, I have taken the obvious step. I had talked to a psychiatrist friend of mine, among others. So now he's saying that I could have spoken to so many people. See, if you see something awkward, and if you think it is relatable to your brain or some nervous system or anything like that, you always want to seek a professional. And here, for the same case, when he observed and when he witnessed the third level of the station, he thought that it is better to speak to his psychiatrist friend. I told him about the third level at the Grand Central Station and he said that it was a waking dream, wish fulfillment. Now, when he, when the narrator told the psychiatrist friend that he saw about the Grand Central, he said that you were in some kind of a dream. Maybe you were dreaming to go into some another world and that is what you saw. It is not a reality, but just your dream. He said I was unhappy. That made my wife kind of mad. So when the psychiatrist friend said that, you know, I think you are unhappy, you're not in a good state of mind and maybe you are not in a good state of mind because you're not happy. Now, when the, the psychiatrist friend says this to the narrator, the wife of the narrator, she becomes really annoyed and she feels that, is it because of me, my husband is not happy? So she wants more clarification on to this. Before she asks, the psychiatrist friend explains that he meant the modern world is full of insecurity, fear, war, worry and all the rest of it. And that I just want to escape. So what is the uh, psychiatrist friend saying here? That there are so many problems in the modern world. And each one of us want to exit through it. I mean, go to some other place. We want to exit from this place. We want to escape through this. Now, let me explain you. See, we all have problems in our life. We all have challenges in your life. But what if you are given an option that you are going to be a, into a place where there are no struggles and no challenges? You will definitely switch yourself. You will definitely transfer yourself from that place. So here, I just want to escape is actually said by the psychiatrist friend. This is not the narrator. The psychiatrist is saying that even I want to exit from so many things that are happening around me. And maybe that is the reason that you also saw because you also want to escape. Well, who doesn't? Everybody I know wants to escape, but they don't wander down into any third level. Now, when the psychiatrist says that you were trying to escape the harsh realities, the narrator says that, yes, who in this world does not want to ex exit? Not only you, not only me, but everybody wants to escape. But do all of us enter into this third level? No, only I enter into this third level. That means there is something indifferent. But that is the reason he said, and my friends all agreed, everything points to it. They claimed my stem collecting, for example, 
that's a temporary refugee from reality. Temporary refugee here means to just uh, stop thinking about something you know, for a while. Stop thinking for a while. So the friends of narrator are saying that it is true. The psychiatrist friend is true. Maybe he's he's telling you that you want to escape from the reality because here the narrator had a habit of stamp collecting. He used to collect the stamps. So like from many ages, like his grandfather, father, him. So you can understand of so many ages, he must have kept those stamps very particularly, very specifically in his house. So the narrator was very happy. He said that, uh, you know, maybe you all are relating this thing, like everybody else who was listening to the story of the narrator, they, they said that you are trying to escape the real world. It can be justified or supported with your habit because you have a habit of stem collecting. So maybe you want to go to some old time or another time. But the narrator disagrees to us and he says, well, maybe, but my grandfather did not need any refugee from reality. Things were pretty nice and peaceful. He says, okay, if I collect stem, you can call me that I am trying to move away from reality. But what about my grandfather? This, these stems belong to him. He has been collecting it from his time. So he was not into some desperate strait because at that time things were very nice. Now things are not good. But at the initial point of time, they were really good. In his day from all I hear, and he started my collection. So that's he has heard all about this from his grandfather. And so he continued with his collection. It's a nice collection too. <clears throat> now he's telling you what kind of uh, stamps are present there. Blocks of four of practically every US issue first day cover and so on. So your first day cover is suppose if a stamp is issued on a particular date. So all those people who collect their stamp, they send an envelope, like they put the stem of that envelope and they envelope it to themselves. Like that envelope will come from the post office, but that stamp will be put on it. So the very first receiver of that stamp will be the person who purchased it. So that is first day cover. Issuing and issuing that stamp on a set on an envelope to themselves on the very first day. President Roosevelt collected stamp too. Now he is giving another example. He said that even President Roosevelt used to collect stamp. So he was also sad or depressed. Everybody who collects stamp was also depressed. This is not true. That means, in a way, the narrator is not the narrator is trying to uh, say that this is not the correct explanation. You say that the narrator was trying to uh, uh, narrator was trying to go from the other, uh, go away from the reality because he used to have a habit of stamp collection. But stamp collection is a very normal thing. Even the President Roosevelt used to do it. So the narrator was not very impressed by this version. Anyway, here is what happened at Grand Central. Now he tells us what exactly happened at the station. One night last summer, I worked late at the office. I was in a hurry to get uptown to my apartment. So I decided to take the subway from Grand Central because it is faster than the bus. Now, very important paragraph. He's saying that one day he got late at the office. It was summer day. And because he got late, he just wanted to rush to his house. He was not trying to escape from anything. He just got late. And, you know, even when you work, when you start working or when you get to school and probably you are asked to stay back for three hours. For example, your school timing is till two and you are asked to stay back till five. So when you go out, when you come out from the school at five, you will naturally want to go quicker and faster to your house. Because you want to go. That's it. You want to meet your parents. Similarly, he's saying that when I was at the uh, office, I just wanted to meet my wife, Louisa. The name will be told to you later on. So I just wanted to meet her because I got late. There was no other reason. I was not depressed. I was not in any bad state. It was just good. Now I don't know why this should have happened to me. I'm just an ordinary guy named Charlie. Now he introduces himself. His name is Charlie and he's 31 years old. So now he's saying that I don't know why it has only happened to me. I'm just 31 year old. I'm a very normal, ordinary guy. I'm not sort of depressed. But when I went to the Grand Central Station, there was something very different. I was wearing a tan gabardine suit and a straw hat with a fancy band. So here, if you talk about this, and I can just scroll a little bit upward also. So you can see that he is painted in black and dressed. Everybody is white. It shows that when he entered the station, he was the one who was the most advanced. Like he was using this kind of a cap. He was wearing a suit. He was carrying a very good, uh, you know, uh, bag. If you see the coat, they, they, there are pinned buttons here, like two or three, four. But if you see these people, they're not wearing some coat. They're wearing long, long trousers and suit. So you can see that he has entered into some unknown area. He has entered into some old or maybe you can say into a place where he doesn't belong to. 
So he says that my name is Charlie and I'm 31 years old. I passed a dozen men who look just like me and I wasn't trying to escape from anything. I just wanted to get home to Louisa. Now he said that there were so many people that he passed by and all of them were looking quite similar. And he said that there was no problem to me. I just wanted to meet my wife. I turned into the Grand Central from Wonderful Avenue and I went down the steps to the first level. So first of all, he reached to this avenue, then he took a turn and he reached the Grand Central and then he went down. So first level is actually down. There is no up level, it is down level. So he first entered to the first level where you take trains like 20th century. So the name of the train is 20th century. It is not century, it is the name of the train. So maybe uh, this 20th century train takes you to some place. Okay, it's not an imaginary thing. It is very much a train. And it takes you to somewhere. Just the name is mentioned as 20th century. Then I then I walked down another flight to the second level, where the suburban trains leave from dug into an arc doorway, heading for the survey and got lost. Now what happened is arc doorway means in a in a circular shape, in an arc shape. So he said that after he did not want to board the train at the first level, he wanted to board it at the second level. So he went to the second level and Something happened that he entered this arc door roadway and he got lost. That's easy to do. I have been in and out of Grand Central's hundred of times, but I'm always bumping into new doorways and stairs and corridor. Now he's telling me the reason why he got lost because the doorways, stairs and corridors at the Grand Central are very confusing. He says that there have been hundreds of times when he had gone into it, but every time he goes to the central station, he enters from some door and comes out from another door. That means it's very confusing. There are so many doors and uh, you know uh, staircases and so many corridors that you are bound to get confused and you may forget your own original path. Once I got into a tunnel about a mile long ago and came out in the lobby of Roosevelt Hotel. Now he's telling you an incident also that one day he entered into a tunnel which was at the Grand Central and he came out at the Roosevelt Hotel. Another time I came up in an office building on 46th Street, three blocks away. Another time when he entered into the same tunnel. Now you see how much of difference. Suppose this is a tunnel. So on his first first attempt, when he entered this tunnel, he came out at Roosevelt Hotel. And when on the second attempt, he entered the tunnel, he came out at office building at 46th Street. So he says it's very confusing. You will never know where you are entering and where you are going. Sometimes I think Grand Central is growing like a tree, pushing out new corridors and staircases like roots. Now he's doing probably a kind of comparison with tree. That the station is like a tree. Every day there are new routes and branches coming out. There is probably a long tunnel that nobody knows about feeling its way under the city right now on its way to Times Square. So even there is another tunnel where he had been and nobody knows about it. And he says that it leads you to Times Square and sometimes to Central Park. So that's very, very interesting thing. And maybe because for so many people through the years, Grand Central has been an exit, a way of escape. Maybe that's how the tunnel I got it. Now see, people, uh, you know, want to try out new things. The meaning of this line is that people want to escape the normal things and get to know something interesting. So they intentionally go to Central Station, Grand Central Station, because they know once they enter into it, they will find something interesting. Their reality will change. They will move to some other place. So what is it trying to say? That because so many people have this habit of entering and coming out from different, different places, maybe that is why I also got into this. But I never told my psychiatrist friend about that idea. Now, why he chose to refrain, why he did not tell this idea about this idea to his uh, psychiatrist friend, the reason is because he thought then the, then the psychiatrist friend would actually feel that he is going mad. He cannot give this reason that people want to escape the reality, so they enter into the grand station. Because if he tells this to a psychiatrist friend who is a professional, he will consider him a mad person. Now, this was all about till second station. The corridor I was in began angling left and slanting downward. Now he was very surprised on the second level, in the corridor of the second level, he again saw that there was something which was going downwards. I thought that was wrong, but I kept walking. So the, the narrator could understand that he is not on the right path, there is something wrong, but he again, he chose to move. All I could hear was the empty sound of my own footsteps and I did not pass a soul. Then I heard that sort of hollow road ahead that means open space and people talking. The tunnel turned sharp left. I went down the short flight of stairs and came out on the third level at Grand Central Station. Initially, he could not hear anyone speaking. It was just his own sound. He felt that he was the only person at that station. But gradually, he heard some footsteps. And then he got to know that he had entered the Grand Central Station level 3. 
for just a moment i thought i was back on the second level so he thought that maybe this is another way from the stairs he has again gone to the second level but when he checked properly he realized that it was not the second but it was a third level and what were the differences but i saw the room was smaller there were fewer ticket windows and train gates and the information booth in the center was wood and old looking so people here uh, you see the rooms were very small there were very few ticket windows and information booth was like very old looking in information booth you can call it as inquiry centers here where you get the inquiry of the tickets where you have to find out the train time and date etc and the man in the booth wore a green eye shade and long black seal protector the lights were dim and sort of flickering when they say that lights were dim and flickering that means they were lamps actually and they did not have coverage like it's a lamp and air is coming here so it's flickering the light is flickering because there is no coverage from the air and this is kind of showing that he had entered into a and you enter into an old time then i saw why they were open flame gas lights like i told you there were brass bitons stones stones here means uh, there are places where you can spit suppose you are uh, uh, eating anything and you want to spit so they were made of brass on the floor and across the station a glint of light caught my eye a man was pulling a gold watch from his vest pocket he snapped open the cover glanced at his watch and frowned he wore a derby hat a black coat button suit with tiny lapels and he had big black handbag mustache so this is actually the description of the people who used to belong to old age everything that they were using even the spitons they were of brass the coat they were wearing the watch they were using the uh, you know everything that belonged to that area was actually old then i looked around and saw that everyone in the station was dressed like 18 19 that means they were probably of 18th century or 19th century he was not able to get the clear idea of them i never saw so many beard sideburns and fancy mustaches in my life a woman walked in through the train gate she wore a dress with lack of mutton sleeves and skirts to the top of her high button shoes back of her out on the racks i caught a glimpse of locomotive a very small courier and light smoke motor with a funnel shaped track so these are the kind of things that he saw to make sure i walked over to a news boy now of course he had to ask about the the current condition of the place and he wanted to know if the thing that he has got to know is true or not yes so he actually went to see and he realized he went to the person who was actually holding the newspaper to get the date and time and glance at the stack of papers at his feet it was a world and the world hasn't been published for years so the name of the newspaper was world and he knew very clearly that this was not the new newspaper it was a old newspaper and it has been stopped publishing for years the lead story said something about president cleveland i have found that front page since in the public library files and it was printed june 11 so when you check the date it was again june 11 so now the confirmation he got that he had entered into an old era old time and the date was june 11 1894 I turned toward the ticket window, knowing that here on the third level at Grand Central, I would buy ticket that would take Visa and me anywhere in the United States we wanted to go. In the year eighteen ninety four, and I wanted two tickets to Gilbert's Illinois. Now, what happened? He said that uh, he knew that at the station he could buy tickets for Visa for himself and his wife, and he wanted to go to Gilbert's Illinois. Now, this Illinois probably means that he had to go to this place. that was an old place so he can get these two tickets from there have you ever been there it is a wonderful town still with big with old frame houses huge lounges and tremendous trees whose branches meet overhead and roof the street so he says that this gailburg illinois is actually a place now also which is very good it has old frame houses huge lawns tremendous trees whose branches were good so he wanted to go there only along with his wife And in 1894, summer evenings were twice as long, and people sat out on their lawns. The men smoking cigar and talking quietly. Cigar here are quite a cigarettes, but they were used to be long pipe. The women waving palm leaf fans with the fireflies all around. These these are the scenery. Like you see, it's a very peaceful time. So he wanted to go back to that peaceful time with his wife Louisa, and he knew that at this platform, because this platform is of 18th century, so he can only get the tickets of 18th century from the third level. if he goes to the second and first level probably he will not be able to go because there people are like him but at the third level he saw that people are very differently suited and the newspaper is of 1894 so he wanted to go back to the time and he got two tickets so that when he goes back to his home he will ask his wife also that you come to the grand central station level 3 and from there i'll take you to illinois illinois because there you'll find a very wonderful 
place. To be back there with the First World War, still 20 years off. Now, this was the time when the First World War had already happened 20 years back. And the next World War will happen after 40 years. So, this was the time when he had gone to this place. The club figured the fare. He glanced at my fancy headband, but he figured the fare. And I had enough for two post tickets, one way. But when I counted out the money and looked up, the clerk was staring at me. He nodded at the bills. So the clerk was actually staring at the man, narrator, because the narrator was dressed differently. And not only he was dressed differently, uh, just a second. Yeah, now because uh, the ticket keeper, the clerk here, he was glancing at the narrator because he was dressed differently. He had a different dress and moreover, the currency that he was using was not of the normal time. There was a different currency. That ain't money, mister, he said. And if you're trying to skin me, you won't get very far. And he glanced at the cash drawer beside him. Of course, and the money was old style bills, half again, as big as the money we use nowadays. So there was a difference in the currency because of course, the notes and the coins that he saw were actually very small as compared to the current one because the currencies must have also changed. I turned away and got a pause. Uh, got a pause. There's nothing nice about jail even in 1894. So the ticket keeper here, he warned him that if you're trying to fool me or cheat me with fake currency, then you are not going to go very far because I'll ask the police to catch you. And that was that. I left the same way I came. So after hearing this, he left because he knew that even if he gets caught by the police, the jail in 1894 were really not good. So he did not want to experience the same thing again. And then he left the third station, third level. Next day during lunch hour, I drew $300 out of the bank. Now he got $300 from the bank. Nearly all we had and brought old style currency that really worried my psychiatrist friend. And he told his psychiatrist friend also that I'm going to withdraw this much money and then I'm going to purchase the old currency. Now it would look very awkward to you. Why would you want to purchase the old currency? People now are selling the old currency. But he wanted to get that old currency by spending everything, $300 that he had. You can buy old money at almost any coin dealers, but you have to pay a premium. My $300 bought less than 200 old style bills, but I didn't care. Eggs were 13 cents a dozen. Now what he says is that after spending $300, he was able to get 200 in the old currency. But then he was happy because he said that at least I'll be able to buy a dozen because they were just 13 cents at that time. But I've never again found the corridor. Now, this is something very surprising. He says that though I saw the third level, I entered that level. But after that, when I got the currency, I never found it. That leads to the third level of the Grand Central Station. Although I've tried often enough. Like, he had tried many times, but he could never go back to that station. Luisa was pretty worried when I told her all this and didn't want me to look for the third level anymore. So, when the narrator here told his wife that I am not able to find a station, but I have actually visited it. So she was very worried and she said that please stop looking out for it. Otherwise, you will actually become mad. And after a while, I stopped. So he actually stopped finding out. I went back to my stamps, but now we were both looking every weekend because now we have proof that the third level is still here. My friend Sam Wiener disappeared. Now, this friend is actually the friend that we're talking about, the psychiatrist. The same psychiatrist, okay? Nobody knew where, but I sort of suspected because Sam is a city boy and I used to tell him about Gail's work, I went to school there and he always said that he liked the sound of the place and that is where he is. He is all right in 1894. Now he really uh, feels that one of his friends, he has already been to the third, third level of the station because he used to love that place. So here the narrator says that the reason of disappearing of his friend is probably because he might have also gone to the third level of the station and then he disappeared. So the evidences are becoming stronger. He is just feeling that maybe there is third level. Because one night, fussing with my stamp collection, I found, well, do you know what a first day cover is? Like I told you in the starting, when a new stamp is issued, 
stem collectors buy some and use them to mail envelopes to themselves on the very first day of sale. And the postmark moves the date, right? So that is the first day cover. The envelope is called a first day cover. They are never opened. You just put blank paper in the envelope. So what you do is you just get these envelopes and put blank paper into it. That night among my oldest first day covers, I found one that shouldn't have been there. But there it was. It was there because someone had mailed it to my grandfather at his home in Galesburg. That's what the address on the envelope said. And it had been there since July 18. The postmark showed that, yet I didn't remember it at all. The stem was six cent, dull brown with a picture of President Gaffi. So one day while he was just, you know, because he had a, st a habit of collecting stems, so he was going through all the stems. Then one day he found that there was a stem of year 1894 and date was July 18. And it was six cent and a very dull brown uh, stem. You know, it looked very dull. And there was a photo of President Garfield uh, put on it. Naturally, when the envelope came to Brandon in the mail, it went right into his collection and stayed there till I took it out and opened it. Now he opened and there was one letter that was kept here. Now this is the letter. I go to wishing that you were right. Now if this letter has been sent to Charlie. Then I got to believing you were right. Now there is some friend of him who says that he has been lost. The same friend has sent him the letter and he's saying that now I believe you were right. And Charlie, it's true. I found the third level. So even the friend of Charlie found the third level. I've been here two weeks and right now down the street at the Delhi, someone is playing a piano and they are all out on the front for singing. Many more. So these are like the situations that are happening. People are dancing, playing a piano, singing. And I'm invited over for lemonade. Come on back, Charlie and Lisa. Keep looking till you find the third level. It's worth it, believe me. Now he tells his friend that even you can find such place. And he re recommends that uh, Luisa and uh, narrator that they have to find. And the note is signed as that. So he's the same friend that has been disappeared since long. And now he has sent a letter through those stems and accidentally found it. At the stem and coin store I go to, I found out that Sam brought $800 worth of old cell currency that ought to set him in a nice little hay feed and gray business. So now when he went to the uh, uh, office that exited the currency in order to inquire if somebody named Sam had also come to your office to exchange the currency, then the officer says yes, and he has got $800. Now this is quite a large amount, a huge amount, and uh, now he is able to understand this $800 he would use to set up a business of grain. Maybe something related to cows and all, etc. Animals uh, gaining, you know, agriculture or poultry farming or something. As he always said, that's what he really wished he could do. So he did not want to be a psychiatrist, actually. He wanted to do this business. So he went back to 1894 and then he got started this business of his. And he suddenly can't go back to his old business. Why he cannot go back like old business here is psychiatrist. So why is the narrator saying that Sam cannot be a psychiatrist in 1894? Because then people did not know about the psychiatrist. They did not need a psychiatrist actually. They were not that aware. So he cannot start a psychiatrist thing there because he knew that people would not want him. So he started his grain business that he wanted to do. And uh, now, not in Galesburg, Illinois, in 1894, his old business, why Sam was my psychiatrist. So here he says that Sam was his psychiatrist, but he cannot be anybody's psychiatrist if he goes in 1894. So I hope this chapter was clear to you. Uh, we'll see you again for the next chapter. Till then, keep sharing, keep liking, and keep subscribing to our videos. Thank you.